Want that to the looking fire but don't have drawing skills? No worries. Keep watching and I'll show you how it's done in Blender. Open Blender, delete everything. We're starting from scratch. Create a plane, place it vertically and apply all transformations. Now switch to the shading tab and create a new material for the fire. I like to split my screen into two sections. Shader graph on the left and 3D viewport on the right. Keeps everything neat. Switch to render preview to see the magic as it happens. Let's set up the transparent shader. First, delete the default node. Add an emission node and a transparent BSDF. Combine them using the mix shader node. To preview the output, press Ctrl, Shift and left mouse button on the node you want to check. Enable not Wrangler in your add-ons if that's not working. In the material settings, change the blend mode to alpha blend. This will allow transparency. Now for the fun part. Add a Voronoi texture. I increase the scale and details slightly and lower the roughness. But don't just take my word for it. Play with the settings and see how it affects the texture yourself. To animate the fire, we need to move the texture. Add texture coordinate and mapping nodes and connect them. We'll use the generated coordinates here. We want the texture to scroll vertically, so animate the Z component of the location. Something like this. But wait, let's add a bit more control over the speed. Add a vector math node and rename it to velocity. Set it to multiply and use one vector as a second input. Keyframe the velocity at zero at the first frame, then set the Z component to minus one at the end of your animation and create a keyframe there. Select both keyframes and change the interpolation to linear. Hmm, too slow. Let's crank it up. Multiply it by 20. Much better. Next, let's add a gradient texture. Same deal as before. Add texture coordinate and mapping nodes to control the gradient position. Modify the gradient with a color ramp. Flip the colors. Combine it with the Voronoi texture using a mix node. I'm using color burn here. Let's play the animation. Pretty cool already, right? But we can push it further. Add another color ramp to control brightness and contrast. For a more stylized look, make another color ramp and change the interpolation to constant. Tweak the position and add gray tone for the edges of the fire. It's looking even cooler now. It's time for some color. Create another gradient like before and run it through a color ramp to create a top-down gradient. Then, make a second color ramp for the main fire colors. Again, use constant interpolation. Mix these together with multiply mode to blend the gradient smoothly. Let's take a look. Nice. Now, increase the emission intensity. Still feels a bit dull, doesn't it? Go to render settings and change the color management transform to standard. Way better. Enable Bloom and tweak the color and intensity. In new versions of Blender, use Glare node in decompositing. Let's not stop here. Add some distortion by creating another Voronoi texture and connecting it to the mapping and texture coordinate nodes. Switch to the smooth F1 version of Voronoi, adjust the settings and blend it with a mix color node. Connect the mapping node output vector, the one we used for the fire texture, to the new Voronoi texture and set the blending mode to add. Now let's see how it looks. See that distortion it's adding. We can go even further. Add the same movement vector to the mapping nodes location for distortion. Now the fire looks less uniform. Want more control? Use color ramp to adjust the contrast of the distortion 
and tweak the individual color channels to affect different axes. I remove the distortion controlled by the green channel. Let's slow the fire down before it fades. For that, we squish the texture at the top part. Copy the top-down gradient, slide it up a bit, invert it with the color ramp, and then combine it with the previous node using subtract. Check it out! The fire is squishing towards the top as it fades. Wait, something feels off. The top distortion is shifting sideways too much. We'll fix that by isolating the vertical distortion using a combined color node. In this case, the blue channel controls the vertical axis. So we just remove red and green components. There we go, much better. Here is a little trick I love. Masking with vertex color. Add the color attribute node, subdivide the mesh a bit and switch to vertex paint mode. Pick black and paint the edges. Then preview the node to check out what's happening. Guess what? Add another color ramp. Because why not? Mix it with the fire texture using screen mode. I had to invert the vertex color because my fire texture was built inverted for some reason. Now you can paint those edges away smoothly. We are not done yet. Let's add some fire embers. Use the same Voronoi texture, but switch it to distance to edge mode. And you know what's next? Add a color ramp. Now mix it with the fire mask using multiply for that glowing ember effect. Lastly, let's add some smoke layer. Duplicate the model and create a copy of fire material. Delete unnecessary nodes. No need for upper distortion and embers. Remove the tune effect and adjust the color ramps. Drop down the emission to 1 or lower. And there you have it, a stylized 2D looking fire using shader graphs. Now go and make some awesome fire effects for your projects. And don't forget to subscribe. Want to learn more about animation? Check that video where I explain how to animate 2D illustrations. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.